morning. We're going live. Andy, we're live. Go ahead, bud. All right. Welcome to OZ News Hour. I'm Andy Hagens here with Jimmy Atkinson. Today is March 25th, 2024, and we are covering the most important stories in the world of opportunity zones. We're talking about opportunity zones. We're talking about opportunity zones. Jimmy, out of every episode of OZ News Hour that I've hosted yet, and I think I've co-hosted what six or seven of these with you, I think we have the most news to cover in this episode that we've ever had. And honestly, a lot of this news, we're like creating the news ourselves because we're hosting all these events that we're getting a lot of questions about. Uh, and I'm, I'm very excited, especially for our lead story today about your new premium workshop. But before we get to that, Jimmy, we have our first story is from EIG. And I think this is a really important story because ever since the OZ program came out, there's been questions. How effective is it? Is it actually achieving its goals? What is its policy impact? What is its impact on society? And according to EIG, OZs have passed their first checkup. Is that right? That's what the headline says, Andy. The data is in. Opportunity Zones passed their first checkup in the ACS. <clears throat> so walk me through what is in this checkup, right? Like, you know, wh what data in here? Like, I, I understand a big part of this is due to the growth in housing availability, which was in OZs, in economically distressed areas. That's always been an area of concern. And indeed, I, I think that was one of the main reasons or, or some of the logic in the OZ program in the first place, right? Yeah, that's right, Andy. Uh, and, and what the OZ program is meant to do is it's meant to revitalize these lower income census tracts all throughout the country, communities that got left behind from the recovery of the Great Recession of about 15 years ago now. And the way that they were able to uh, qualify these different opportunity zones was they looked at US census data, not just at the 10 year mark, but each year, the American Community Survey, which is part of the US census, releases five year data on the most recent five years available. So. When Opportunity Zones were first designated in 2018, they relied on data from 2017, uh, roughly, I think 2016 and 2017, the five-year data ending in those years to determine which zones, which census tracts would be eligible to be designated Opportunity Zones. And now we have five full years worth of data from the American Community Survey. And that's what this uh, analysis from the Economic Innovation Group is investigating here. Yeah. And so, I mean, what's the specific win here? I mean, to me, it's that from 2018 to 2022, mm -hmm. the data shows that in the first years after the law took effect, the housing stock of opportunity zones experienced a faster growth rate than the peer census tracks. And I mean, that to me, th that's huge, right? If there's one thing I'm going to hone in on in this article, in this checkup, so to speak, that would be like the pulse, right? When you go in for medical checkup, I'm like, that's that is my KPI, to be honest, my key performance indicator. What, yeah, what do you, am, am I interpreting that correctly? Yeah, yeah, yeah. There, and this this entire analysis is based on housing stock. So, mm -hmm. what type of what what what, a, what quantity of housing is available, and the growth rate of that available housing uh, nationwide versus just opportunity zones versus tracts that were eligible to be designated as, as opportunity zones but were not made into Opportunity zone. So those would be the peer census tracts. Uh, I'm just going to read this this second paragraph here. It kind of summarizes the entire uh, study here. While opportunity zones are still lagging behind the national growth rate in housing, these areas are starting to converge with the rest of the country. And indeed, across nearly one third of states, OZs experienced faster growth in housing units than the state itself. The, it also points to other KPIs, which I want to get to toward the end of this article, Andy which are poverty rates, vacancy rates, and income levels. Uh, those are really important. We'll save that for the very end. Uh, and if, unless you have further questions, I'll just spend the next two to three minutes walking through some of the findings of this study. Is, is that all right? Yeah, absolutely. Give, give us the highlights. We got a lot to cover in the show, but, but I think this is an important uh, piece. So yeah, hit me yeah, with I the did, highlights. I did just want to scroll through. This is a tweet from Jay Parsons that we actually covered a few episodes back, so I won't belabor the point there. But uh, this is the first main chart in this 
article which points out the growth rate through 2017 uh, in these yellow points right here. And then I'm going to zoom in on there so you can see it if you're watching it on your tiny mobile device. Uh, this would be um, the US average OZ tracks is the second bar, and then non designated eligible tracks is the third. And you can see if you go to the green dots, uh, the US average, the growth rate for housing stock is 4.1% nationally. But for OZ tracks, it's grown pretty significantly from 1.6% to a 2.7% growth rate, which is higher than the growth of the growth rate of the non-designated eligible tracks. So that's that's one area where you can see where OZs have had a leg up over peer census tracts. I gotta, I gotta say, Jimmy, yeah. not the most intuitive graph I've ever it's seen. Not the most yeah. intuitive graph. But I, I, I kind of get it. So, so the point here is when you take a distressed area mm -hmm. and whether you designate it in an OZ or not, actually matters it's not just like well hey these were going to get housing anyway like no if you divide all of these eligible tracks into those that were designated and OZs that weren't there's a pretty significant delta in their growth and housing yeah um and it's it pro probably a challenge to display it visually but i, I think it, i can kind of tease that out it is and, and what they're yeah. really trying to show here is not just the growth rate but the growth in the growth rate the acceleration mm -hmm. of the growth rate uh i guess that's a second order acceleration or something like that. I don't know. I may have missed that day in uh, in college. But anyways, this this area, the delta between the yellow and the green is much more pronounced here for OZ tracks than it is for the for their peer tracks here. That's really what they're trying to show, I think. Um, and then this shows a few different states, the, the statewide average growth rate versus the OZ average growth rate during that those same two time periods that we're comparing. Um, so that's kind of interesting to look at. I, I won't go, I won't belabor all of these charts. There's, there's, there's a lot of great charts in here and some really interesting commentary. We're going to link to this article in the description for this episode uh, on our show notes later on. But if you go to eig.org, you should be able to find it. Um, Andy, these are some of these other KPIs that I wanted to point out. This this one's going to be more intuitive to understand, I think, where you can see the change in the poverty rate, the change in the median household income. I'm going to focus on these two. So let's focus on change in the poverty rate first. In opportunity zones, the poverty rate has dropped 3.6%, um, whereas in peer census tracts, it's only dropped by 2%. Now, you can argue that the poverty rate was higher in 2017 in opportunity zones than in non-designated but qualifying eligible opportunity zones. But that's still a pretty good, um, that's the right direction we want to head in at least. And the nationwide poverty has also gone down, uh, which is great news. Now let's go to median household income comparing 2017, the year before opportunity zones started, and then 2022, the most recent year we have data for. Uh, the median household income has climbed significantly in opportunity zones compared to its peer census tracts of uh, only 19% right there. So, And then we've got some data on vacancy rates. Also, vacancy rates have dropped more in opportunity zones than they have in um, in their peer zones or, or nationally. Um, some of that is just because it started in a worse place, so it had more room to make up. But in any case, it's it's good to see these numbers are at least trending in the right direction. Yeah. And Jimmy, you know, the other headline for me looking at this data and these different KPIs is this isn't just like one cherry picked key performance indicator, key metric, right? Because when you're looking at a variety of these different metrics, poverty rate, income level, housing availability, they're all improving more in opportunity zones relative to those pure census tracts. So you're seeing like a breadth of evidence, you know, a, a depth of evidence, but also a breadth of evidence, not just like one data point. When when you see it across these different data points and when you see it across five years of time, to me, that's a very solid and substantive data-based argument that yes, opportunity zones are working. These are effective policy, whether you're conservative or liberal or Republican or Democrat, these are working. And here's the data, here's the evidence. There's There's mountains of it now even just within this checkup. Exactly. And, you know, Jay Parsons 
pointed this out on his Twitter account. Um, he he linked to this 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 graph from Real Page, which showed that as a percentage of the total number of units delivered nationally, um, opportunity zones have seen a huge increase from less than ten percent up to nearly twenty percent since opportunity zones were enacted. That's this blue line here. And again, we did cover this more extensively in a previous episode. I believe it was our late January episode of this program, OZ News Hour. So, so that, that's Jimmy, that's from that's that's the report from EIG. Special thanks to Catherine Lyons uh, for for drawing my attention to this. I she 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 linked it to me last week, and I told her, "Hey, we're going to cover this on uh, OZ News Hour. Next chance we get." So here we are. So thank you, Catherine, and yeah, to all of our listeners and viewers, we'll post this link on our show notes, which are always available on OpportunityDB.com. So feel free to check that out. Examine all those graphs. A uh, lot of detail, a lot of data there. Jimmy, our next story. This was our headline of today's episode. You have a huge announcement that you are announcing to our email subscriber list at OpportunityDB, our subscriber list of 21,000 plus readers and subscribers tomorrow. But -hmm. everyone on the live stream or who subscribes to this feed can hear it a little bit early right now, right? And that is your flagship new workshop that many of your viewers, your readers, your fans, can I say your fans have been asking you to make, to create for years, and you finally did it. So Jimmy, tell us about the Opportunity Zones Blueprint. I don't know if I have fans or not, but I, I have followers. <laughs> I, have people, I have people I've who met me, you, you, I have people who look to me for OZ fans. education. Sure, sure. Uh, so this is, this is the culmination of, uh, well, I guess it's the next culmination in the five plus years of effort that I've put in in the Opportunity Zones industry, I'm now here to announce that we are launching a new live workshop that we have titled the Opportunity Zones Blueprint. We're referring to it as the ultimate shortcut to Opportunity Zones mastery. And I truly believe that it is just that. It's going to be a two-day workshop for busy investors who essentially just want to master the OZ program and make their next Opportunity Zone investment with confidence. Uh, You you can do so in just four hours. So let me tell you a little bit more about this program. By the way, you can learn more about it uh, and you can get it. Uh, You can purchase it today by heading to ozinsiders.com slash blueprint. But Andy, I get emails all the time from folks and I get phone calls all the time from folks and I get strategy calls with my OZ Insiders members all the time from folks who they've They've uh, had a capital gain event or they're about to have a capital gain event and they don't know what to do. They, they've heard about Opportunity Zones. They know it's a great way to mitigate taxes into portfolio diversifying investments that will also, frankly, do quite a bit of social good as well. Uh, but they don't know what the best option is for them. Should I start my own fund? Should I invest in somebody else's deal? How do I do that? What deals are available? Uh, how does the program work? When when do I have to pay taxes? What forms do I have to file? So I've compressed all of my knowledge into this four hour, well, all my knowledge about opportunity zones, I should say, <laughs> into this four hour uh, course, this workshop. It's gonna be, it's gonna take place over the course of two days. Uh, part one will take place on April 3rd at noon Eastern time. And part two will take place the following day at noon Eastern time on April 4th. Here we go right here. When is the workshop? So those are the two live events. And then they'll be conducted, the the entire thing's gonna be conducted via Zoom, like most of my stuff. And then for whatever reason, you're not able to attend uh, one session or both sessions, but you still wanna purchase the workshop. Uh, we're going to record the whole thing, and it's going to be available for on-demand viewing to the students who purchase it uh, the day after the event. Uh, now, we are limiting this class to the first 12 people who sign up for this course. Uh, I, I want it to be a little bit different from a lot of my more instructional webinars where I'm just talking at you, and then we field questions when it's question time. It's going to be more of an intimate setting where I do want a lot of back and forth. Um, Andy, that's a high level overview. 
of the Opportunity Zones blueprint. I'm sure you have a couple of follow-up questions for me. What do you got? Yeah, I, I do have a couple of questions and, and also one one thought from my end. Mm -hmm. One question, because you have so many podcast episodes and you've done so many webinars. Um, just to confirm, this is brand new. This is content. You've never presented this. You've never talked about this. You have a, a five-step framework to making your first or next OZ investment. You've never revealed that framework anywhere else. This is all exclusive new content in this two-day workshop. Is that right? That's correct, Andy. And uh, if you don't mind, I can kind of go through the different modules here. Uh, but before I do, just to zoom out, I, I do uh, three times a year an updated version of my Opportunity Zone Investing Crash Course. It's always the first presentation at any of our OZ Pitch Day events. And that's essentially what this is, with the exception of the OZ Investing Crash Course is 20 minutes. It's very high level, whereas this goes deeper. It's drawn out over four hours. There's live Q&A that we don't have time to get to during OZ Pitch Day, and it goes into a lot more detail about all of these steps. And yes, it does include my proven five-step framework to make your first or next opportunities on investment. So Andy, if you don't mind, I'll just kind of walk through each of the six modules that will compose this workshop. On day one, we're going to cover modules one, two, and three. Uh, module one is going to be an introduction to opportunity zones for investors, the, the three biggest tax benefits associated with opportunities on investing, and key dates, and just a general walkthrough of the program. In module two, we're going to cover how to leverage the tax benefits as an investor, uh, how opportunity zones can fit into your portfolio, the types of investments that I feel best leverage the program and and how to generate capital gains, eligible gains, even if you don't think you have any. Uh, so that, that'll be an interesting one. Module three, we're going to actually walk through my proven five-step opportunity zone investing framework. I'll also answer common questions about eligible gains. And then I'll go through what I've identified as the three different types of opportunity zone investment strategies and the pros and cons of each one. So that'll be day one on April 3rd, starting at noon Eastern time, module one, two, and three. Day two, part two, the following day on April 4th, we're going to pick up right where we left off with module four, investing in a multi-asset opportunity zone fund, some of the pros and cons of that strategy and why I think it's a great, this particular strategy is a great choice for many investors, especially beginners. And then I'm also going to give away uh, one of my free bonus guides, which is a bonus checklist of questions to ask an Opportunity Zone fund manager. In module five, we'll present another option for investing in Opportunity Zones, this time investing in an individual Opportunity Zone deal. I'll go through the pros and cons of this strategy, how it could potentially earn outsized returns, but why it's a great choice, not really for beginner investors, but for more experienced investors who have a clear investment thesis. Uh, plus, we'll review some key questions to ask deal sponsors. And then finally, in module six, we'll go through the option of creating your own Opportunity Zone fund, pros and cons of doing that strategy, how it can be beneficial in terms of buying you more time, how you can use your OZ fund to invest in larger funds via sidecar deals, and a list of recommended professionals who can help assist with that strategy because it's, it's this isn't really so much a DIY strategy. You do need some help from some experienced expertise professionals to help put this together for you, but it could be well with your time if your capital gain is large enough. And then in our bonus module, I'll show you how to walk, I'll walk you through how to file the different forms you'll need depending on which strategy you undertake uh, so that you're reporting properly to the IRS each year. Awesome. And Jimmy, I wanna underscore to our viewers and listeners, there's only 12 spots available for this workshop because you want to have a lot of interaction and live Q and a throughout the workshop. So it's more, you know, interactive than like a normal webinar type thing. So if you're interested in, in taking this workshop as a student, don't delay because it's going to go out to our whole email list tomorrow, 21,000 plus, uh, OZ investors and professionals. We do expect this to sell out of course. 
one other comment I just wanted to make, you know, cause I, Jimmy, I worked with you a little bit to, you know, design the, the outline of the course. Um, and the, the fact that you've managed to fit it all into four hours total is amazing. And like the real, the real benefit, at, at least in my opinion, in my view, is that you're covering such a depth of information uh, for OZ investors, for a very specific audience in just four hours. So it's like the benefit is actually how short it is, not how long it is, right? Because this is this is a shortcut, essentially. It is if you're a busy investor, you know you want to make an OZ investment, you just haven't had the time, or you're stuck on a particular detail where you don't know what to do next. You know, you don't know how to uh, you know, vet a deal sponsor or, or just some specific thing. I think your five-step framework is very, very useful for any investor to know where I am, am I in the process and what is my next step? So I'm very excited about this. And again, only 12 spots. So it's very limited. And I think it's a, a very a reasonable price point. So make sure to visit ozinsiders.com slash blueprint if you're interested. Jimmy, anything else to add before we move on to the next story? I'm looking forward to teaching this. Yeah, we've we've already blocked out most of this course is, is created. And I think you're right, Andy. It's uh, it, it has everything you need just distilled and compressed into a pretty tidy four hours. And that's going to include a lot of time for some live Q&A as well. So I'm looking forward to it. Uh, that's coming up in just, when is that, Andy? Is that a week from, that's just a little more than a week away, isn't it? Absolutely. Yeah, I, I think it's going to sell out fast. And I think it's going to be a lot of fun. So I'm I'm looking forward to it as yeah I'll I'll be there I won't be asking any questions but uh I'll I get to audit the class right as a as a team member here, you do you so. you don't count as one of the twelve students so no I get to kind of sit in the back of the classroom uh right. and and observe so moving on um our next story Jimmy you have a bone to pick with Barron's newspaper right because and, and yeah tell tell us about this bone that that you need to pick with with Barron's because I'm a I'm kind of a Barron's fanboy, so well, they, they hey, get things wrong sometimes. So, look, I love Barron's, and you know, I don't know Karen Hube here, the uh, the author of this article. I will give her props though for at least including opportunity zones in this feature story. the 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 headline here is "Tax Deadline Is Near: Don't Miss These Last Minute Tips." While many strategies, such as harvesting losses to offset capital gains, had to be completed by January one. To count for 23, there are still ways to ring out benefits retroactively. And so she lists a few of them. One of them is the full SALT deduction. Love that. And then the second one here is postponed capital gains taxes. So by the way, I love the fact that she knew enough to draw attention to opportunity zones. And I think it's it's brilliant because Barron's gets, it's got wide distribution. It's, it's read by uh, a... a I don't know. I don't know what their circulation is, but it's. I know it's huge with the advisor industry and the high net worth and family office communities. And um, Andy, you once had a Baron subscription until I canceled it for you, but uh, I know you. I know you and I still <laughs> read it regularly. Um, I half kid there. Here, here's what I here's what I like about this. Again, that she draws attention to opportunity zones in this article. You can you can. I'll just I'll just read what she says. If you realize big gains late in 2023, there is time to invest them in an opportunity zone fund and defer paying capital gains taxes. Absolutely. Opportunity zone investments established in 2018 under the same TCJA come with tax breaks to attract capital into economically struggling areas. Perfect. Love that. Okay. Now here's the part I have a huge beef with. While the juiciest tax benefits have elapsed, to remain. So this to me indicates that Karen, Karen, by the way, I'm sorry. I wish I had talked to you sooner. I don't know who you are. I love that you include those these here, but if you think that the juiciest tax benefits have lapsed, I think you don't understand opportunity zones. And this is a common misconception that investors and advisors and even Barron's reporters apparently have about opportunity zones. The juiciest tax benefits are still on the table. Uh, some of the, some of the, the, the lesser less important, I would say, benefits have either expired or they're diminishing. So I'll speak to those first. One is the uh, basis step up, which allowed you to reduce the amount of gain that you recognize on your 2026 return. Those have expired. You could have originally, if you had invested a few years ago, a $1 million gain, 
you essentially recognize that it is as either an $850,000 gain or a $900,000 gain when you file your 2026 taxes. Those benefits were only available for early adopters of the program. Um, secondly, the deferral period is through 2026, no matter when you start investing. So you can appreciate that if, well, if you invested, if you rolled over or deferred a capital gain from 2018 and you had, boy, six years to, to defer that until 2026, that was a pretty big benefit. Now, you know, if you, if you are reinvesting a gain or deferring a gain from 2023, to 2026, well, that's only a three-year period. So that's a little bit less juicy. I would still argue the juiciest tax benefits are very much still around. And that is, well, I mean, mainly that if you hold an opportunity over 10 years, any new gains will be free of capital gains taxes. She kind of buries the lead here. This is the biggest and most juiciest. Is most juiciest, is that grammatically correct? I'm going to say it because it's so good. Oh, wow. Most juiciest benefit <laughs> is, this is a... Super Roth IRA, Opportunity Zones, you get to grow an unlimited amount of money completely tax-free for at least 10 years, uh, which is really an incredible benefit. And heck, Stephen Baxley even backs me up here. He says, if you double or triple your money after 10 years, when you dispose of it all, that gain is excluded from your income. That, Karen, is the juiciest benefit. My apologies. I wish we had gotten a chance to talk sooner. Um, I don't know if you're watching the program or not. I don't know if Karen's a fan or not, but uh, I love you for putting opportunity zones in this article at all. I just wish that she had framed this a little bit differently because a couple of the benefits have uh, either expired or reduced in value. But boy, that, I mean, not paying capital gains tax after a 10 plus year hold, that's the that's the holy grail, Andy. That's the ninth wonder of the world, as I call it. Yeah, no, to, to <laughs> be fair to her. Tax free returns. To, to be fair to her, to, to be fair to Barron's, I think when you first learn about the OZ program, it can come off initially as a little bit clunky, as a little bit complex. You know, it's the type of thing that you kind of go, you know, if only I had some sort of blueprint or shortcut to understand this better as an investor. No, I kid. But in all seriousness, I actually, I said you had a bone to pick with, with Barron's, but I, I'm with you in that. I just appreciate them for covering opportunity for zones sure. with, with these other tax breaks. Jamie, I got to keep things moving and we're not going to cover Move all of along, our stories. Uh, we're, we're moving it along. Um, our next story is some events we have going on at OZ Insiders in the next couple of months, including something very exciting in Chicago, if you're in the Midwest or if you're willing to travel to the Midwest to meet up with me and Jimmy. But first, Jimmy, what is OZ Insiders for any of our viewers or listeners who aren't aware of the group? Andy, I'm glad you asked. Yeah, we only just launched this back in November. So I think a lot of our viewers, listeners, email subscribers may not be aware of this yet. That's why we keep repeating it on this program. But OZ Insiders is my mastermind group for high-performing Opportunity Zone investors and advisors and other professionals where you can stay in the know on key Opportunity Zone trends and emerging news and come together into a community of like-minded high performers within the opportunities on industry. Uh, I'm happy to say that we are well past 40 members now. We're at nearly 50 members. We've grown a little bit. We've added a few members since our last podcast episode, Andy. I think we're at 47 or 48 members last time I checked. Um, and what what else what else do I say here, Andy? What else do you want to know about OZ Insights? And to, to underscore, it's you know, it's not a race to have. Uh, it, it's more about the quality of the people mm -hmm. inside the group. So I, I want to uh, stress that. Uh, but but the news that we have for this episode of OZ News Hour. Well, first of all, Jimmy, we had a tremendous uh, March. I know March isn't over. We had a lot going on in the month of March. You mind giving us a little recap, a quick recap of yeah, the I'm group of events that we had in March? I'm on our, our OZ Insiders website right now. By the way, this right here that I'm showing on the screen is the OZ Insiders homepage, ozinsiders.com. You can go there, learn more about the group. Now I've clicked onto the calendar page, ozinsiders.com slash calendar. We've got our upcoming events here, but Andy, you wanted me to recap our busy March. So we did have a busy March. First of all, we had our first in-person event of the year, our OZ Insiders meet up and dinner. We went to a really nice steakhouse, Albernays, here in Dallas, Texas. I'll click through to the uh, 
to the photo gallery and kind of show oh, yeah. you what we had. We had we had Thanks, 12 so people attend this uh, this dinner. It was a great time with uh, with a lot of OZ Insiders members. Um, a lot of great conversation to be had and the the quality of the attendees. Here's our waiter and waitress, by the way. They uh, they stole my phone and took a took a selfie when I wasn't looking. <laughs> <laughs> so, but I, but hey, yeah, jokes on them because now their faces are on our website forever. Um, a lot of great conversation at this dinner. Um, the quality of the attendees was off the charts. I got a lot of great feedback from the folks who attended, and I can't wait to do it again. Um, this that was a recap of our first Jimmy. Yeah, and I, I have to say that the the members were raving afterwards. I mean, the the <laughs> feedback that we received was absolutely tremendous we can't wait to do it again and more on that in just a second but and you're gonna be at the next one andy that's right but more on that in just a second I, jimmy i also want to ask you about the master class that you taught because that also happened in march yeah the very next day actually i do uh uh present our march master class on raising opportunity zone equity so that was the uh that that class went over an hour. It's only supposed to be an hour, but we had so many questions and <laughs> I had to pack so much information into such a short period of time. Uh, I, I basically outlined best practices for starting up your own Opportunity Zone fund and marketing that fund to the retail investor community, to high net worth individuals who have eligible gains and they're looking for deals what do they want to see inside of an opportunity zone fund or opportunity zone individual deal? How do you put together a good pitch deck? What are what are some of those important pieces of information that you need to present? And then some legal and logistical uh, concerns as well, which had been covered in our previous master classes presented by Andrew Daup and Ashley Tyson earlier this year. Uh, so that was a that that's a that's a quick recap of the raising opportunity zone equity masterclass that I presented earlier this much earlier this month, excuse me, on March 12th. And like all of our past masterclasses, it is available on demand for instant viewing for our OZ Insiders members. And again, you can learn more about OZ Insiders and the community and all of the advantages that joining have to offer by heading to ozinsiders.com. And Jimmy, I'd like to talk about what we have in the hopper on the schedule, because I think we have some tremendous events and masterclasses lined up for this spring. I mean, if, if you're an OZ investor and you're hungry to learn, I think the the, the time has never been better. Uh, obviously, the, the OZ blueprint that you're the workshop that you're doing next week, Jimmy, but we have these masterclasses uh, coming up on April 9th. We'll have Jill Homan presenting a masterclass on diligencing opportunity zone funds and deals. Uh, Jill is just tremendous. Her knowledge is um, encyclopedic. I would say, you know, she really understands OZs, you know, from front to back uh, from the nitty gritty, but also she's a very high level and strategic thinker. I think she's a very good, effective communicator. So I'm looking forward to learning about that, you know, as a private investor, um, I feel like I, I can always learn more, stand to learn more about due diligence in the OZ space. And then that's being followed the following month. Uh, Michael Mara is coming to teach financial modeling for OZ deals, which I think is a great, it's kind of a one, two punch, you know, lear learn more about diligence and then learn more about financial modeling. Those, those two skill sets, I think kind of go together. Um, and again, if you join OZ insiders today, You'll be able to attend both of those upcoming master classes live, as well as get access to the recordings of all the previous master classes. But Jimmy, what I think I'm most excited about is what is next on the calendar after those two master classes on Friday, May 17th. We will be doing an OZ Insiders only meetup and dinner at Gibson's Steakhouse in Chicago, Illinois. This is one of my very favorite, if not my very favorite, steakhouse, and I love steakhouses. Uh, and Jimmy, I'm, I'm just excited. I know we're going to have some members who are traveling, uh, from other parts of the country to be at this dinner and meet up. And of course, if you're in the Midwest and it's somewhat easy to get to Chicago, we, we'd love to have you if you, if you're a member of OZ insiders, or if you'd like to join and then join Jimmy and I at this private dinner. Uh, but I am, I'm, I gotta say, Jimmy, I'm really looking forward to this and, and you know, meeting up with some of our members in person in May. I am as well. I think we've already got uh, five or six soft commitments for this one. 
I'm a hard commit. Andy's a hard commit. The two of us will be there for sure. Uh, Friday, May 17th, 7 p.m. Gibson's, Chicago, Russian division location. Uh, don't go to the one out in Rosemont or wherever it is. Uh, we're going to the, the real one in the heart of Chicago. Let's see. <laughs> what can I show you here? Look at this guy carrying all these steaks. This is going to be our waiter. Um, there's the venue. There's the tomahawk steak that Andy's going to eat. Here's our table. Uh, it's going to be a great time, and uh, we're looking forward to it. You know, if you're an OZ Insiders member, uh, dinner's on us, and um, we'll, we'll send out some more information about how you can RSVP to our members. If you join today, you'll get the invite immediately. Uh, just let us know if you're going to be there. Andy, how many people are coming to this thing, do you think? I kind of, I feel like it, it, we're going to hit the over. I okay. feel we like hit, we hit 12 at gonna... the Dallas dinner. I think this one might be bigger. Maybe yeah, I, I think it, it certainly will be. And a, and a word of, of warning to anyone who does attend the dinner, Gibson's is famous for their martinis. Uh, I would suggest a, a, a two martini limit. Honestly, my limit is probably one. I mean, these things are, they are substantive, um, but the steaks are fantastic. Uh, all their, all, all their food is, uh, it's just, just it's like a Chicago uh, mainstay, I would mm -hmm. call it. Um, and there's a lot of OZ stuff going on in Chicago too. So I think it's just, we, we might do a little tour of some OZs in the Chicago land area. We'll, we'll kind of figure that out closer to the event, but yeah, uh, TBD, possibly a site tour, possibly a baseball game. Mm -hmm. We're going to, we're kind of playing it by ear, but for sure dinner Gibson 7 PM, we've already got the reservation. We're in touch with the restaurant. We're just going to work to get a head count over the next few weeks here and then lock it in. Looking forward to seeing everybody there. Absolutely. Now turning from the Midwest to the South, or is it still the Midwest, Jimmy, Arkansas? I think Arkansas uh, is in the South. Yeah. We'll, we'll, yeah, we'll, we'll go to, to the South. We have an OZ story. This, uh, this was via Jill Homan's opportunity zone outlook. So I, we, we get a lot of our news from her newsletter. Make sure to subscribe to it if you haven't already, but this is a $17 million development in downtown spring Springdale. Uh, that has some affordable housing in it, Jimmy. And uh, anytime I hear that, my my ears sort of perk up and like, well, the devil's in the details. What are the details here? Um, but this sounds pretty cool. What what really stuck with me when I reviewed this article was just the name, Big Emma. It's a 77 unit mixed income apartment development near the corner of Emma Avenue and Park Street. And construction is expected to be completed by summer of 2025. Now here, here's the details on uh, the affordable housing. So the, the developers are going to permanently reserve 30 units in Big Emma for households earning below Northwest Arkansas's median income. And Jimmy, this to me, it's like shot and then chaser. This is a great chaser to that first story we did about the OZ program, uh, you know, passing its, its first checkup. This to me is, is an example of another uh, success story or soon to be success story, I should say, of, you know, I, I think when when uh, people, when voters, when legislators, when policymakers can see a success story like this that is producing very concrete, affordable housing units in places that sorely need them, it's a huge win all the way around. And, and for investors, right? Like, it, you know, it, uh, it can be very profitable for investors too, while also addressing the nationwide housing shortage. So, you know, we don't cover every single groundbreaking or every single development or OZ product in the nation in this program. Otherwise we'd have to run, you know, we'd have to do it more than monthly, Jimmy, but I still, I like to always highlight some of these that we come across that sound kind of cool. Anything else to add, Jimmy on big Emma? No, this is a good one. Um, I love the name big Emma. I've I've got an Emma in my family, Andy. I think you've got an Emma in your family too. So we we both love the name. Um, and you know, congratulations to the groups that are pointed out here. Congrats to Groundwork, to Community Development Northwest Arkansas, to Buffalo Builders, and to Build Architects for for having this all come together. And uh, love to see stuff like this, Andy. Absolutely, congratulations all around. And that brings us to our last story of the day. I, I, I Jimmy, I really want to say like. Hollywood goes to OZ's land or, or OZ's go to Hollywood, but it's, it's actually the reverse. It's more like Hollywood is coming to OZ. So this is really interesting. I mean, we've heard 
a little bit about OZs and movie, ma movie making and film studios. There's been, you know, different projects and funds and things over the past few years. Uh, but this producer, Richard M. Greenberg, he has been involved in some really like big movies, you know, some household name type movies, right? Yeah, it points out that he's the producer of Platoon here and The Last Emperor, which was the Best Picture winner in 1998. And, uh, well, he's found affinity in the Sooner State, Andy. And, uh, yeah, tell us more about this one, Andy. Should I pull up his IMDb page? Too? Yeah, yeah, I know please. You so so he's, he's basically saying, I, I want to find the quote. Let's see. A, a Hollywood producer with back-to-back -back Academy Awards for Best Picture says he's fed up with LA and he's moving to Oklahoma where he plans to spend upwards of $250 million to make movies from a home base in Norman, Oklahoma. He's fed up with LA, Jimmy. I don't even live in LA and I'm fed up with LA too. No, but this, seriously, I think Oklahoma uh, yeah. is, is, um, they have a little bit of a film industry there already. There's been some other movies that have been made there. Right. Um, but there are several, is it in Norman or, or in some of these towns, there are several different opportunity zones. So you can basically spin up either a specific project or a studio and have it all be funded as a QOZB, right? Which is what they're talking about in this article. And it's almost kind of a footnote in the article that this all happens to be funded as a qualified opportunity zone, uh, business, um, but I, I think it's really interesting that, you know, because because there it does take some extra time. It takes some extra foresight and planning to fund projects this way. Right, Jimmy, as, as you well know. So it's interesting to me that someone from Hollywood who wants to make movies would kind of have the, the foresight to understand, like, I want to get this funded with OZ money and do the filming and production in area opportunity zones. And that can be very lucrative for our investors, right? Absolutely, Andy. And uh, yeah, I've heard of, by the way, while you were talking, I just pulled up real quickly at opportunitydb.com slash tools slash map on our map of opportunity <laughs> zones. I pulled up Norman, Oklahoma. Yeah. And it looks like they've got, I see one, two, three, four, maybe five here. Probably just these three. I think this is the next town of Etowa. Etowa? Atowa, pink. I don't know. Yeah, Not sure. Downtown Norman looks like they've got three opportunity zones. So I'm sh I'm sure this uh, movie studio is located in one of these. Andy, I when the first when the program first rolled out, I never thought, oh, movie studios, no brainer. But uh, this is the it's like the fourth or fifth different movie studio or sound stage that I've heard of. I've heard of one in Silmar, California, uh, just north of um, the San Fernando Valley in Los Angeles. Um, or I should say the north end of the San Fernando Valley in Los Angeles. I've, but but beyond California, I've heard of one now in Oklahoma. I know of one in New Mexico. I've heard of one getting underway in Ohio. And I know of one in Massachusetts as well. And there might be a handful of others, but that's five different movies or movie studios or film and TV soundstage um, facilities that that have been opportunity zone businesses that are able to raise opportunity zone equity through qualified opportunity funds um movie studios as a business it's a little bit risky right it's kind of like rolling the dice and hoping you uh you hit a home run i'm to mix my metaphors or hope you hope, 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 hope you hit a grand slam but i think a lot of these a lot of these are strikeouts but you know if you can hit a grand slam or find that uh that unicorn then um you know opportunity zones are the way to do it because it's a capital gains play and there's going to be huge appreciation if you have a, a movie or, or film franchise or TV franchise hit it big and you can have an exit at some point, 10 plus years down the road. Right, Andy? Yes. Now it needs to be said that that being said, Jimmy, I mean, I, the points you made were great, but they're not going to be shooting really big budget Hollywood uh, blockbusters with, with this, you know, with this studio, with these projects they're talking about, TV movies, which apparently mm. TV movie productions can cost about a hundred thousand to one hundred fifty thousand dollars per week, according to this. But I got to say, there's nothing wrong with a TV movie. Oh, I mean, yeah. I'm a big uh, PBS masterpiece fan myself. Lots of miniseries and you know little movies 
on PBS Masterpiece. So who knows? Maybe he'll be making some of the movies that I love, although a lot of those are British. But, you What's know, what's your favorite Masterpiece show, Andy? What do you got? Jeez, oh, I don't even know where to start, Jimmy. I mean, how, how much how much time do you have? Um, Mid Midsummer Murders is probably my favorite. Oh ongoing yeah. series that's 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 a good one foils yeah. wars and other I, we'd be here all day if i go through all the pbs masterpiece right. that i like we, we should one talk of, we should talk after we hit stop what well, one other um note though on this producer jimmy and i were trying to get to the bottom of this uh, and, and maybe you know maybe somebody can comment in the chat um if, if they if they know but this uh, his imdb page lists several of the movies but then the article mentioned that he was the producer of terminator and uh the, the original rambo movie that was called first blood starring sylvester stallone i mean these are some heavy hitting movies um this guy's the real deal jimmy like he's he's produced some really good stuff although the, the, but again the article mentions some movies that we did not see on his IMDb page. So now I'm confused because I kind of assumed that IMDb was like the, the end all be all of this kind of data. And maybe that's not the case, but I don't know. The article any... calls him a fixture in Tinseltown and he does have quite a few producer credits here. I don't know really how they distribute credits or what gets on IMDb and what doesn't, but yeah, that's, maybe they're that's missing some. Fair enough. Well, in any case, this is an interesting story. It's one that will be, we got to ask our guy, Will Walker, if he knows, uh, Richard M. Greenberg. I'll bet I'll bet he's got a story or two about Richard M. Greenberg if I know Will. Yeah, you know what that 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 Venn diagram that the intersection between Hollywood and Opportunity Zones, Will Walker might be right in the middle of that Venn diagram. He's probably the perfect, so. guy, perfect guy to ask. With that, Jimmy, we are about out of time. So it is now time for our picks of the week. Jimmy, what are you reading, watching, or listening to in the world of OZs? that you would recommend to our audience? Andy, I'm glad you asked. Uh, I'm going to pump OZ Pitch Day, which was our big event. We do it three times a year. And during our last episode of OZ News Hour, we were promoting OZ Pitch Day because it was coming. It's coming really soon, I think was the title of the episode. Well, now I can say it's done. It's in the past. It's behind us. Um, but it lives on. And you can now watch it on demand if you head to ozpitchday.com. We have all of the recordings from the entire day up and available for viewing. All of our fund and deal sponsors, their presentations. So if you missed it, if you missed the whole thing, or if you, if you were only able to see some of it, especially if you have a capital gain event coming up, or maybe you've already had a capital gain event, and you're considering Opportunity Zone investments, I would encourage you to visit ozpitchday.com and take a look at some of our sponsors' presentations and pitch decks as well. Just click the play button on any of these. You can click the click the download link on any of them if, if you want to download the pitch decks and take a closer look. There's a good zoom in right there. Um, a lot of different presentations here. And we also had a few different uh, educational segments as well, including our panel on diligencing OZ funds and deals. And then, well, we've got a couple that are coming soon still, but um, all of the presentations are up and available for on-demand viewing. Uh, head on over to ozpitchday.com to check it out and learn more. And our next one will be coming up in June. And I'm sure we'll be talking about that one during our May episode, Andy. I love it, Jimmy. I love your pick. My pick, it's a call back to earlier in the episode where we talked about your flagship new premium workshop, Jimmy. And I'm just so excited about it. I, I mean, I've been a little bit in the weeds with you working on it a little bit behind the scenes. And I just love doing these live workshops with a smaller group of students and a smaller group of people. Uh, it just allows for that personal interaction. And it's brand new. I love doing anything for the first time. You know, it's it's brand new. We've never done it before. Anything could happen. Uh, I love new stuff, Jimmy. So I'm really excited for your new flagship workshop that you will be debuting here shortly. Uh, for all of you watching and listening, thank you for joining us today on the live stream or for listening after the, Oh, Jimmy. One, one, yeah. one more, one more pick, a bonus pick for me, okay. which is this, this comment from our friend, Michael at wealth channel. He says, I can confirm the Gibson's martinis are amazing. 
Okay. I second that. We, we, we second that Michael. Uh, <laughs> so thank you everyone for watching and listening. Jimmy, thank you for joining me today on OZ news hour. This has been a ton of fun. As always, Andy, thanks so much.